Greetings, everyone. Today I'm going to continue my conversation about the gift of tongues, and I'll be using some clips from a message by Joseph Prince. And the reason I've chosen these particular clips is because Joseph Prince repeats the same kinds of things that you find from other charismatic and Pentecostal leaders of the same persuasion. So, I could use clips from almost anybody. I've chosen him because, fundamentally, he makes the same claims as everybody else. Now, his first clip, he makes a very clear statement, and I'll play that for you. And then I will also play another short clip where he defines what he means by tongues. It takes a little while to get to that in his message. So I've plucked that out from the end of his message when he clarifies what he means by the gift of tongues. But we'll first examine his statement about the book of Acts and what he says about the occurrence of tongues in the book of Acts. So here's that statement. So every time you find in the book of Acts, when someone is baptized in the Holy Spirit, they always speak in tongues. So I think that's fairly clear. He's just said that every time somebody in the book of Acts receives the Holy Spirit or is baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you like, every time that happens in the book of Acts, they speak in tongues. Is that true? Now, before I go through the book of Acts, I'll play you a statement that Joseph Prince makes in this message that he's given about what he means by tongues. So that is the uh, prayer language that every believer should have. So that's what Joseph Prince is talking about. He's talking about a private, personal prayer language. And that is something Paul addresses in 1 Corinthians chapters 12, 13, and 14. And that is something you do in private, unless there's an interpreter. We've already discussed that in the last video. So I won't go there. But Joseph Prince is saying, every time somebody receives the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts, or is baptized with the Holy Ghost, they speak in a private prayer language. Let me play both clips. So every time you find in the book of Acts, when someone is baptized in the Holy Spirit, they always speak in tongues. So that is the a prayer language that every believer should have. So let us turn to Acts chapter 1 and look at verse 8. The writer of the book of Acts quotes Jesus, But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Unquote. So Jesus made that statement, and Luke quotes it here. Notice that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, notice that when Jesus says the Holy Ghost will come upon you, it is for the purpose of witnessing. And I don't know how speaking in a private prayer language could be witnessing of Jesus, because the private prayer language as Joseph Prince and others define it, is a language that nobody understands. It's your private prayer language. And indeed, it requires an interpreter. And most of the time, there is no interpreter. So it's something you do privately at home. So that's not what Luke is writing about. And that's not what Jesus is saying. Now let's move ahead to chapter 2, where Luke explains tongues. Starting in verse 3, he says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this is the first example in the book of Acts, where the Holy Spirit fills people and they speak in tongues. But are those tongues the ones Joseph Prince 
talks about. So that is the uh, prayer language that every believer should have. No, they're not. And we get clarification as we read through the account. Moving down to verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because every man heard them speak in his own language. So we see here the first account of tongues is known languages. And that is because that is a fulfillment of prophecy, and it is the witness that Jesus spoke of. The Holy Spirit would fill people, and they would witness of Jesus Christ. And that has to be done in a language that somebody understands. And so Luke clarifies, every man heard them speak in his own language. Then down to verse 8, and they said, and how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and in Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. You see, this is the fulfillment of the prophecy Jesus gave. This is the witness. Joseph Prince's private prayer language would not be able to do that. So that is the uh, prayer language that every believer should have. The scripture is not talking about the same thing as Joseph Prince. And indeed, the day of Pentecost is the fulfillment of the prophecy spoken by Joel. And if you read down from verse 16 onward, it reads as follows, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. The fulfillment of Joel's prophecy is not a personal prayer language. It is real languages spoken to the testimony of Jesus Christ, for the witness of Jesus Christ. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. So this is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy whereby people would speak in other tongues. And this is the first mention in the book of Acts. And so we take our primary meaning usually from first mentions. And so Joseph Prince is trying to make people believe that this somehow was an indwelling and a manifestation of the kind of tongues that he's promoting. And indeed, it is not. It is something entirely different for an entirely different purpose. Now, here's another quote from Joseph Prince, where he insists that Jesus prophesied a personal prayer language. All of us have the sign that Jesus said in Mark, and these signs will follow those that believe. All right? One of the signs is that they shall speak with new tongues. Our Lord Jesus said that. Now let's not forget that when Joseph Prince says new tongues, he means the following. So that is the uh, prayer language that every believer should have. And so Joseph Prince, when he speaks of Jesus and new tongues, he's referencing Mark chapter 16, verse 17, which reads, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. And if we're going to be generous, we could say, yes, this refers to some kind of a private prayer language. 
But indeed, if people who had that type of gift, that private prayer language, adhered to what Paul says the church should do in 1 Corinthians, then we would almost never know who has that gift and who does not, because they would be keeping silent and practicing at home. So it really would not further the witness of Jesus Christ. And it's very unlikely that that is what Jesus is specifically talking about. And indeed, as we have already examined what Luke wrote in the book of Acts, he's referencing this speaking in tongues as being something that is known languages. So that is the fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy at the day of Pentecost. It is not a private prayer language, although there is such a thing. And Paul addresses that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14. If you have that private prayer language, then you need to apply the principles and the protocols that Paul suggested. And if you do that, it is highly unlikely that anybody will ever know you have that gift, unless you're in a church where there's an interpretation, a valid interpreter. Now I'll replay Joseph Prince's first statement, and then we'll go through the book of Acts and see if what he says is true. So every time you find in the book of Acts, when someone is baptized in the Holy Spirit, they always speak in tongues. So we've already established that the first time tongues is experienced or reported in the book of Acts at the day of Pentecost, it is not the same tongues that Joseph Prince is speaking of. Joseph Prince is talking about a private unknown prayer language. Luke's account is about speaking in known languages. That is the fulfillment of prophecy. Everybody heard the testimony, the witness of Jesus in their own language. That's the first time the Holy Ghost is received, then followed by tongues, real languages. Now let's turn to chapter 4. Now remember, Joseph Prince says every time they receive or are baptized in the Holy Ghost, They speak in tongues. Is this true in Acts chapter 4, verse 31? Let's read the verse. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And so here, there's no mention of tongues. They're speaking the word of God with boldness. That is to say, They're preaching the gospel. They get filled with the Holy Ghost and they preach the Word of God. They're not speaking in tongues. So Joseph Prince is again wrong. He's not telling the truth. So every time you find in the book of Acts, when someone is baptized in the Holy Spirit, they always speak in tongues. Now let's turn to chapter 8 of the book of Acts. We'll read from verse 15 who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. At no time do these scriptures ever mention speaking in tongues. Neither in the entire context of the chapter is the speaking of tongues mentioned. It is simply referring to the receiving of the Holy Ghost. And if there were any gifts received and manifested, we would have to consider the multitude of gifts, not just one gift. Did they receive interpretation of tongues? Did they receive the gift of wisdom? the gift of prophecy, the gift of teaching. What gift did they receive? The text is silent here. Tongues is not mentioned. Joseph Prince is not telling the truth. So every time you find in the book of Acts, when someone is baptized in the Holy Spirit, they always speak in tongues. Now let's look at Acts chapter 10, 
from verse 44 to 46. It reads as follows. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So from these verses, Joseph Prince might be able to make some kind of very loose argument for his case. But contextually, it doesn't make any sense that they're speaking in unknown tongues. Because the text says, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. How would they know that these men were magnifying God unless the language was understandable? And indeed, Luke is most likely reflecting back on the real languages that people heard the gospel and the testimony of Jesus Christ preached back at the day of Pentecost, that everybody heard in their own tongue, in their own language. And so Luke, in these verses, talks about the pouring out of the Holy Ghost, and people actually heard in their own language God being magnified. If it was Joseph Prince's unknown language of tongues, how would they know God was being magnified? Let us now turn to Acts chapter 11 and read from verse 15 on. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. Is Luke not writing of the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell on them, and they spoke in known languages? Is that not the reference? Let me continue with verse 16. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift, as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I, that I could withstand God? Now again, there is no mention of speaking in tongues. And the real reference, if any tongue is being spoken, it would be a known language. Because Luke said, And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us, at the beginning. The beginning referring to the day of Pentecost. Known languages. And for the sake of clarity, let me turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul references the gifts of the Spirit starting in verse 6. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So again, when we look at the book of Acts, and we just looked at chapter 11, and the reference to being baptized with the Holy Ghost, we cannot say that this means speaking in tongues, and indeed, tongues is not mentioned, contrary to what Joseph Prince teaches. They could have received any one of the gifts that Paul lays out in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, as I just read. And let's look at one more example, Acts chapter 19, verse 2 through 6. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is, on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. This is a passage that is commonly cited by people like Joseph Prince to say, see, every time the Holy Ghost is given, there is a speaking in tongues. Well, no, because we've looked at other examples where there was no speaking in tongues. So sometimes the Bible gives account where people receive the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. But in this case, the Bible doesn't specify what those tongues were. Was that Joseph Prince's private prayer language type of tongues? Or were these real languages? We don't know. And so, we can't impose those values on the text without reading our presuppositions into the text. So we cannot deny that they received the gift of tongues, but we don't know which tongues they received. I am of the mind that this is Luke writing the account and referencing back to the day of Pentecost, when they spoke known languages. That is the safest and most logical understanding of tongues in chapter 19, verses 2 through 6. The other thing from the text that we cannot discern is, did all of the twelve present speak in tongues and prophesy? Or did some of them speak in tongues and some of them prophesy? Again, the text is not clear. So to try to draw a conclusion from this text that every time somebody receives the Holy Ghost, they will speak in tongues of some sort, is not honest. We must take the text at its value. And so, yes, they spake in tongues. What were the nature of those tongues? We don't know. They prophesied. Did they all prophesy? It doesn't say. Did they all speak in tongues? It doesn't say. But one thing we can conclude for certain, that Joseph Prince's statement that every time in the book of Acts that people receive the Holy Ghost, they speak in tongues, that is false. We've shown that. And indeed, when they do speak in tongues, most of the time it's clear that they're not speaking in a private prayer language. They're speaking in known languages that the gospel might be preached to people who don't understand certain languages, that the witness of Jesus Christ would go out into the world. And that is the logical understanding. Again, there is a private prayer language. Paul addresses that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I talk about that in the previous two messages on tongues. But that's not my point here today. My point is to show you that people like Joseph Prince will tell you things that are not true in order to make their point. One of the biggest signs is what? They shall speak with new tongues. Straight after that, they shall take up serpents. They become immune. They drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Speaking in tongues makes you supernatural. Anyway, I played you that last segment just to show you some of the crazy stuff that Joseph Prince connects to speaking in tongues. We've already shown that his statement that every time the Holy Ghost is received, people speak in tongues in the book of Acts, we've already shown that that is completely false. There are many examples where people receive the Holy Ghost and do not speak in tongues. There's no mention in the text of speaking in tongues. Joseph Prince is not telling you the truth in these matters. But I played you that last clip to show you how far off track this guy will go to make his point. You become supernatural when you speak in tongues? Show me that in the scripture. It's nowhere in the scripture. Not a mention. And because you speak in tongues and you're supernatural, you can drink poison and play with snakes? When is the last time Joseph Prince played with poisonous snakes and drank poison? I would venture to say that he's never done that. And I would venture to say that if somebody brought him poisonous rattlesnakes 
and a vial of poisonous liquid to drink, he would not drink that and he would not play with those snakes, regardless of his private prayer language. He would not. This is the kind of stuff you're going to hear. Now, the one thing that really bothers me about guys like this is if you look on YouTube, he will get a million or more views for that particular video on tongues where he's flat out lying and talking crazy about being a supernatural person because you've spoken in tongues and now you can drink poison and play with rattlesnakes. He'll get over a million views. And I'll tell you the truth, be lucky if a hundred people watch this video in the next year, maybe two hundred. But then I'm reminded, Jesus said, narrow is the path, narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. Broad is the road to destruction. Where the many go, that's the path of destruction. And Paul said, have I become your enemy? because I tell you the truth? What can we expect from an apostate North American church? Obviously, they will follow the apostate teacher every time. Few there be that find the narrow road, and few there be that travel that path. So if you're listening to guys like Joseph Prince and others who teach the same junk that he teaches, I'm sorry to say, you're on the broad road. Let God be true, and every man a liar. God bless. Thank you for listening.